Good morning to everyone on Facebook. So I want to start off by saying that this topic that you see here in the title is not up for debate or argument, but I do want to just shine a light on the lies of the enemy. So I want to start off with something that Jesus said in John 14. Let's let's read John 14 really quick really quickly because this is this is Jesus talking and one thing about Jesus is what he says it it just overrides every and any other thing that is out there any 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 opinions any doctrines you know just whatever is out there the word of God says let God be true and every man a lie and so Jesus says this in John 14 and I think that it's it's very vital what he's saying because it's preparing us for the times that we are in. And so Jesus says this first in John 14. He said, let not your heart be troubled. He said, you believe in God, believe also in me. He said, in my father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I, I love this. I will come again and receive you unto myself. He says that where I am, there you will be also. And whether I go, you know, and the way you know. And Thomas said unto him, Lord, we know not whether thou go and how can we know the way? Jesus says this. He says, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man comes unto the Father but through me. And so I want to take a moment to address the coexistence belief or religion because this is something that I saw some years ago and I began to see it often. So with the co the coexistent thing, it, it has not always been around. It's not something that has been around for decades and centuries. This was actually something that was birthed in like 2006 from this individual named Muhammad, Muhammad Abdul. And so he came up with this. And so I would see this a lot on bumper stickers, on shirts, um, hashtags. I would see the word coexistence. And so it wasn't until a couple years later that I actually got the understanding of what that was. And so if you don't know what coexistent means, it means to um, just, just live peaceably with everyone, whether that's separately, independently, just for everyone to find a common ground. Listen, you have your beliefs. I have my beliefs. We don't judge each other. We don't attack each other, but we live where we can all get along. That's really what it means. Let's just all get along. Let's live peace, peaceably together. You know, you and I, we don't have to go against each other. We don't have to argue or debate. We can all live peaceably with each other. You have your doctrine. I have mine. And that's, that's pretty much what it is. But Paul says something very important. He says that we are not to be unequally yoked together with unbelievers. Be okay. Yeah, be okay with everyone's God, you know, accept my religion, accept my practices. Don't judge me and I don't, I don't judge you. You know, let's, let's exist, exist together, exist together at the same time. You know, let's just be, let's just, let's just be cool. Let's, let's be cool. You know, don't tell me that what I'm doing is wrong and I won't tell you what you're doing is wrong. But Paul says that we are not to be unequally up together with unbelievers. And so if I am living peacefully, peacefully with you and you think that it's okay to sacrifice babies, then I'm in agreement with what you believe. If I say, well, hey, let, yeah, let's all coexist. Let's all just be one big happy family. You know, we're serving one God. I've heard that said to me on so many different levels. And in my immaturity days, I accepted that doctrine at one point. You know, we're all serving the same God. Listen, let me tell you, when I was sitting with the Lord, I thought about it like this. Listen, there's a whole bunch of counterfeit designer purses. There's a whole bunch of counterfeit knockoffs from the actual brand, but there's only one authentic. There's only one Michael Kors. There's only one Louis Vuitton. There's only one Tory brooch. There's only one, you know, Tropicana, there's only one snicker. You can have the knockoff brands. You can have the Equate brand. You can have the, the great value brand, but there's only one authentic. There's only one 
true God. There's only one God. And so we can have, you know, this religion over here that says, hey, we do this over here. Let's just, let's merge together. Let's, let's be under one big umbrella. Because at one point when I was practicing the, the Jehovah Witness doctrine, I was convinced that we were all serving one God. But I really wasn't serving the one true God, so I thought. And so, listen, you have all of these different ways. You have all of these different paths. You know, people are in the world and people are coming up with all types of religions. Listen, I got to experience a new religion being birthed yesterday. So, you know how we will hear of new doctrines being birthed. And, you know, by the time we hear, you know, it's it's, it's been out there in the world. It's popular. It's, it's, it's been out there in the world. But yesterday, me and my sister came across someone who was very close to us. Now, this individual used to be a Hebrew Israelite. And so, you know, you hear that, you you know that this is something that has been out. Okay, that's that's a common doctrine. But as we begin to scan through this person's Facebook because this person is so close that they're related to me. And as as my sister began to just scan through the person's Facebook, she was trying to figure out why does this person have a red background? Like, that's weird. You know, so she clicked the picture and the comment section was filled. And when she went to the comment, se the comment section, she saw a whole bunch of comments that said, welcome home, welcome home. And so she was like, did this person get locked up? Like, Am I missing something? And so she just randomly clicked on, you know, someone from the comment section. And when she went on their page, she noticed that that individual had the same exact background. And so she clicked on another person in the comment section and she realized that that person had the same exact background. And so she thought to herself, wait a minute, this is not normal. What is, what is, this is a new doctrine. This is a new doctrine. And, I, and when I saw it, I said, wow. This is how they are being birthed every day. And so as these individuals have decided to form this new doctrine, their belief is that you can, they believe in reincarnation pretty much. They believe in reincarnation and reincarnation is when you believe that when you die, your soul, your soul is birthed into a new body. You believe that when you leave this life, that you're going to live again in another life as something else, whether that's an animal a old person, a baby, or whatever the case is. And so when I saw that, my heart, my heart was burning because I'm like, no, this person, this person didn't used to be like that. But it showed me how the days are getting darker. And it showed me that even us as the sons of God, if we're not careful, if we're not in our word, then Jesus said, if it were possible, even the very elect would be deceived. He says that in Matthew 24. If it were not possible, or if it be possible, he says the very elect will be the seed. Let me go there real quick. He says, this is Matthew 24, verse 22. Except those days shall be shortened, there shall no flesh be saved. But for the elect's sake, those days shall be, sh be shortened. Why? Because there's going to be many false prophets, many false religions, many false Christs. They're going to say, hey, look over here. Christ is over here. And Jesus said, when they do that, when they do that, do not believe it. Because this is how new doctrines are being birthed every day. New religions are being birthed every day. The fact that this individual who I'm close with was this way. Now he's starting his own doctrine, his, his own belief. What is happening? It goes to show that. People are tapping into other dimensions illegally. So whether that's through marijuana or taking in any form of substance, people are getting information, getting information from, from ungodly sources. So you may say, well, you know, why can't we all just get along? Why can't we all just serve our own gods and live how we want to live? Listen, Jesus did not preach that. Jesus said that I am the way, the truth, and the light. And no man can go to God but through him. So it doesn't matter what your debate is. It doesn't matter what your belief is. You cannot get to God but through Jesus. Now, I know a lot of you, you hate Jesus. A lot of you, you hate Jesus. And you don't believe that Jesus Christ is the son of God. And so you want to go another way. You want to take another path. Jesus calls you a thief and a robber. He calls you a thief and a robber. He says that if you try to go any other way, 
If you try to go through any other door, you are a thief and a robber. And all that has gone before him were a thief and a robber because they had their own way. They had their own doctrine, which is why you see there are so many religions. They had their own Bibles. Why are you telling me to believe this, but you have other information apart from the word of God? Why do I need two Bibles? You know, I, I, I encountered some Mormons a couple of years ago and I, I conversed with them and I wanted to know why, why, why do you believe what you believe and why are you trying to convince me? What am I going to get out of this? Because ultimately that's the, that's the main goal of what's real and what's fake. So if you're telling me that this is real, what evidence do you have to back it up? Because the Bible is the only book on the planet with a hundred percent prophecy, a hundred percent prophecy and everything in this is, is completely true. You may say, well, how do you know that? How do you know that? What you believe is true because I see it manifest. I see it manifest in my life. You may say, but but how do you know? Well, I have trend, I have evidence of transformation in my life. No other religion has a hundred percent evidence of transformation. You see the Muslims, you see the the um, Jehovah Witness, or you see the Mormons, or you see the Black Hebrew Israelite, but there's no evidence of transformation. How is it that you're going to convince me to serve this God, but you have hatred in your heart? You have racism in your heart. You think that it's okay to smoke marijuana. You think that it's okay to abort babies. You think that it's okay to have multiple wives. So how is it that you're going to convince me that this is good and that this is real? Listen, no. What I believe, I know that it's real because I see it manifested. I see it manifested in my life. I see it play out in my life. And you and I, we should. If what you are believing, if you don't see evidence, if you don't see it played out in your life, then you need to question whether or not what you believe is real. And that's pretty much, that's pretty much what it is. Some are going to say, well, I believe that what, what I practice is, is good. And you're going to say that because you call good evil and evil good. Because if you think that it's okay to carve, carve into your flesh and get tattoos, I have some stuff written now. If you think that it's okay to curse, if you think that it's okay to kill people, kill babies, kill animals, if you think that it's okay to smoke marijuana or to drink or to take in any type of substance or to do human sacrifices, if you think that these things are good and okay, then you are in a false doctrine. If you think that it's okay to remove or act from the Bible, then you are in a false doctrine. If you think that it's okay to be drunk unto the point where you, your, your, your natural state of mind is altered and you think that that's good, then you are in a false doctrine. If you think that reincarnation is okay, then you are in a false doctrine. If you think that these things are considered good, then you are in the wrong doctrine and that is not of God. God is holy. God is pure. God is righteous. And the word of God says that in God, there is no darkness. There, there is no evil. And so if I am in a religion or if I am practicing a belief or doctrines that are telling me to do anything that is evil and not of God, then I am in the wrong religion and that what I am practicing is not of the one true God, the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Because there's many gods out there. Little G, there's many gods out there. The word of God says how the gods of, of the nations of the world are metal, wood, and stone, meaning they're statues. They're just, you know, images, pictures, and frames and carved from men's hand. They're false gods and people bow to them. You got the, the Hindus who they, they worship false gods. You got the, the people who serve Buddha. Buddha was a real person, but he died. But they worship his, his statue and his image and they pray to him and they give him food and they, they do things to him. And you got to understand what I've learned is that you may say, well, some of these religions, I've actually seen things happen. Listen, you can convince yourself. You can believe something so strongly and so deeply that that thing actually manifests. Because you got to remember that with the false gods come, come spiritual things that are attached to them. And so when you are worshiping these false idols and these false gods, you got to remember that you're not only giving yourself over to this false God and this false image, but the demonic spirits that are attached to them. So some may say, well, God told me to follow this religion or God told me to, to do this. And I heard God and, and I heard his voice. Listen, John says to try 
and test every spirit and see if it be of God. Because not everything that has God on it is of God or God in it is of God. And so you may be practicing in a false religion and you may be seeing some results to some degree. And that's because now you're tapping into other entities and other spirits. And now this is where witchcraft comes in at, where people begin to practice a false religion and they smoke marijuana or they do things and now they're tapped into to demonic sources that are giving them information and letting them know, letting them know, letting them know what's going on and how they can access this and how they can gain power over here and how they can make this happen over there. That's witchcraft. That's witchcraft. And that's something that I saw yesterday with the individual who was starting this new doctrine. I say, oh, this is how they begin to, this is how witchcraft comes into a lot of the false doctrines. And you wonder why they're able to do certain things. Like, man, how come, you know, that, 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 that um, doctrine over there, how come they're growing in number? What are they doing? Yeah, a lot of them have power from illegal sources because of what they're doing and what they believe and what they're practicing. A lot of them believe that it's okay to serve God but smoke marijuana. That's where you have the Rastafari, the Rastafarian religion that comes in at. You know, you can grow your dreads, smoke, mar smoke marijuana, and still pray to Jah and think that you'll receive anything from him. You know, that they, they, they've convinced themselves that they can receive from him. But you will not see nothing from the one true God but curses over your life. I like how, um, how Paul says it. Paul or John that says that if any man come unto you with any other any other doctrine, let him be accursed. Because some of you think that no, we all should get along. We all should just, you know, find common ground. But that's not what Jesus preached. That's not what Paul preached. We have to rebu rebuke, reprove, correct. We have to we have to address and confront the lies of the enemy. The enemy. Is telling people that, no, we have to find common ground and we have to get along. Like, no, we got to address the lies. Why? Because some people may not know that they're in a false doctrine. They may not be aware of what they believe is false. Like, no, we have to shine a light. That's what Jesus tells us that we've come to do. He says, I am the light of the world. You are the light of the world. A city that is set on a hill cannot be hidden. I am a light and I can't not... I cannot allow my light to be dim or hidden. Light comes to expose. It comes to reprove. It comes to bring clarity. And so that's that's what the sons of God, that's why we're here. That's why we've been called out to bring light to the dark areas. And so light and dark cannot mix. They cannot coexist because that's what coexist means to collaborate, you know, to Concide, like no, let, let's join, let's join air, let's collaborate, let's figure out where we can find common grounds. That, but no, light and dark, light and dark cannot coexist. We cannot collaborate. No, we 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 cannot do that. And so, Second John one verse ten, John says this: If there come any unto you and bring not this doctrine, what doctrine? The doctrine that Jesus Christ preached. I am the way, the truth, and the light. No man comes to the Father but through me. And he says this, receive him not into your house, neither bid him God speed. For those of you who like to say, God bless you, you know, I know we have different beliefs and, you know, we practice different things, but God bless you. No, John says, do not speak God speed over them. No, that man is a curse. If they come to you with any other doctrine, if they say, hey, try this out. Hey, I found a new religion. Hey, I, I, I believe this now. Hey, I'm doing this over here. I think you should try it. I think you should do it. No, let that man be a, cur a curse. If they are not preaching from this word, the only Bible on the planet with 100% prophecy, if they are not preaching from this, let that man be a curse. Let him be a curse. Bid him not God speed. Don't speak blessings over them. No, you don't get to partake in the blessings of the God of Abraham, Isaac, and, Is and Israel or Jacob. You don't get to partake in the blessings. No, you get curses because you are believing in doctrines of devils. That's another scripture I want to look at. Listen, I can go to the word of God all day. Let every man be a lying God, the truth. You know, 
Jesus Christ says that you cannot get to God. I know they're telling you that this is the way. I know that they're telling you, hey, you know, there's another path. There's another way to God. You don't have to live up to those standards that those Christians are telling you. Listen, what I've learned is that there are two types of Christians in this world. As I look for the scripture, there are two types of Christians. You have the ones that are in the forefront. Those are the ones that you see on TV, like TV Jakes, Joel Osteen, the Pope. These are the Christians that are on the forefront, on the forefront that represents Christianity for the rest of us. And you got you to gotta have a level of discernment in these last and evil days. Everyone that says that they are a false prophet are not sent by God. Jesus said that that's going to get worse. That's going to get worse. And if you don't have discernment, then you're going to be sucked right into their false doctrine or their false belief. Especially if God did not ordain them. Just because a person has a title in front of their name, that does not mean that God has ordained them. You got to understand that the days are getting darker. New doctrines are being birthed every second, every moment. And so I want to look at what Timothy says. So you can go with me to 1 Timothy 4 verse 1. He says this, Now the Spirit speaks expressly. That in the latter times, some shall depart from the faith. And we see this happening now. Why? Because they are finding out that there's other ways. And I do that because there's only one way. There's only one real way. You know, you have these other paths that they have other practices. You know, you don't, you don't have to just have one wife. You don't have to just have one husband. You don't have to be married. You can get tattoos. You can carve things into your flesh. You know, this is another way. And many people are falling away from the faith because of what's out there. Yeah, they once believed in, you know, the Son of God, Jesus Christ, the Son of God. Jesus Christ, the Alpha and Omega. Jesus Christ, the author and finisher of our faith. They once believed, but they got caught up into something else. There were several people who started off this walk with me. Now they're in other doctrines. And, you know, oh, you know, I I'm learning my energy now. I'm learning, you know, you know. What I am in the light and, you know, I, I grew up my jet, my dreads because I'm trying to tap in with my ancestors. You have that. You have that out there. And if you're not careful, if you're not staying up under the covering of, of God, then you're not protected. You're not protected from what's out there and you're going to get sucked right in. And he says, so many are going to depart from the faith, giving heed to seducing spirits and doctrines doctrines of devils this is what's happening many people are giving it to seducing of spirits no you're being driven by lust your own lust your own desires you think that following the god of the bible has too many standards and and you know it, it's too hard and it's boring and i don't i don't want to do that but this over here looks fun you know i i like I like getting piercings on my body. I like that. I like listening to Christian rap and I like listening to Christian rock. I, I like how it makes me feel. I like the fact that I'm still able to smoke marijuana and talk to Jah or talk to Allah. I like the fact that I'm able to have babies and abort them. I like I like that religion. Yeah. Doctrines of devils. Why? Why do I say that? Because the unclean spirits are giving these people People, these ideas, when they tap into the, the supernatural, when you smoke marijuana, when you take drugs, when you do drugs, when you do rituals and stuff like that, you're tapping in to the demonic realm. And of course, they're going to give you information. And this is how we are having these new doctrines. This is how they're being born every day. And so this is what's happening. I want to look at some more. Let's look at Galatians because I think Paul is um, talking in Galatians. I think that's the main one that I wanted to look at because Paul says that, listen, if they come to you with this foolishness, they have to be a curse. Like, no, I cannot receive what you are saying because you are not preaching what Jesus Christ preached. You're not preaching the God of the Bible. You have your own doctrine. I remember I met a lady last year who, well, she was a witch. I met a witch last year and what am I looking for, guys? What, <laughs> what am I looking for? I'm looking for Galatians. So I met a witch last year who told me that she has the power to heal. She told me she has the power to heal and that, um, you know, she's trying to eliminate what Jesus Christ preached. 
And when I when I heard her say that, I said, "Oh, she's a witch." I said, "Oh, she's a witch." Oh, you got you got power outside of God, and you're trying to to you know teach people that they can have power too to to heal and to to um you know do yoga and other practices that allows you to tap into the spiritual realm illegally. That's witchcraft. And she convinced me that she can heal people of anything. And I was like, for real? At first, you know, she was drawing me in. This is how careful we need to be. Because it sounds so interesting, you know? You know, the, the doctrine of devils, you know, seducing spirits. She was seducing me. Like, it was drawing me in because I was like, wow, you know, not, not very many people have the, the gift of healing. But it is a, a gift that's still active today. But the fact that she was accessing this power outside of God and trying to do away with God. Like, no, you're, you're, a, you're a curse. You're a witch. You are a witch. And I met another witch um, towards the end of last year who had that spirit of Jezebel on her and that seducing spirit. And whatever was on her was drawing me, you guys. It was drawing me in. She, she was a witch. She, she was a witch. And she she's operating in some illegal power. But anyways, Galatians 4, verse, uh, is it Galatians 4? Oh, Galatians 1, Galatians 1. Stay with me, guys, stay with me. I, I have a lot to talk about, and I'm trying to get it out so fast, so just stay with me. Galatians 1, 8. So, Paul is saying this, but though we, or an angel from heaven, preach any other gospel unto you that, or, or he said unto you then that which we preach, what are they preaching? They're preaching... What Jesus Christ preached. They're preaching, um, you know, that you got to repent for the kingdom of heaven is that hand. You know, there's only one way, you know, and that's through Jesus Christ. And so he says, but though we are in, or though we or an angel from heaven preach any other gospel unto you, then that which we preach unto you, let them be accursed. As we said before, so say I now again, if any man preach any other gospel unto you, then that you have received let him be a curse. And so Paul says this twice. And so if they come to you saying, hey, cuz, check this out. Or, you know, hey, there's this new thing that I'm practicing over here and I like it. And, you know, I'm finding my inner self. And, you know, I'm tapping into my ancestors. And I'm having these dreams. And I'm seeing things. And, you know, I'm feeling things. If they're telling you about this, you better be careful. Let them be a curse. If they say, man, let's just find common ground. You know, we're all serving one God. You know, let's just, let's get along. Don't, don't, don't judge. You know, let me do me and you do you. No, let them be a curse. That's what Paul says. Let them be a curse. Like, no, you are a curse. You're trying to deceive me. I don't want the doctrine of devils because I believe this. I believe what the one true God says. What evidence do you have to back up what you're saying? Because the last time I checked, you have zero evidence of transformation in your life. Zero evidence. No other religion has any evidence of transformation except the Christianity religion. And I'm not talking about Pope Francis and T.D. Jakes and Joel Osteen and the rest of the, the known, the big name pastors that you see on TV. Reverend Bishop John. And, and I'm not talking about them because that's another level of Christianity. Those are, the, those are for the, the, the fake people. But I'm talking about the, the true sons of God that... They're living right. They're striving for holiness. I'm talking about those. They have evidence of transformation in their lives. When you see their lives, it lines up with the word of God. You know, they're not, they're not living a way that says, hey, I'm lukewarm. They're not living in a way that says, I have one foot in the world and one foot in the church. No, you see them living what Jesus preached. No, if any man come after me, he must first deny himself and take up his cross. You see them living that way. You see them confronting the enemy in the gates as Jesus confronted the Pharisees. No, we have to confront the lies when we see the lies. We cannot be okay because light and dark has no, no fellowship. We cannot be unequ unequally yoked together with unbelievers. I know many of you, you wish that we can just all find common ground, but no. We got to set the captives free, but we also, we, we have to expose the enemy. We have to expose the lies of the enemy. That is our job. That's what Jesus did when he confronted the Pharisees and the religious leaders. He told them, you are from beneath. I am from above. 
and that you are the service of whom you obey. You believe this. You're trying to tell other people to keep the law, but you don't need to keep the law. You are a liar. John the Baptist calls them generations of vipers, thinking that they have Abraham their father and that they're justified by that. He says, listen, John the Baptist says, God is God is good enough to raise up stones in your place, rocks in your place. And so don't think that you're justified based on what you know, because many people feel puffed up based on knowledge and they feel like they're justified based on knowledge because knowledge is power. The more I know, the more powerful I can become to some degree. And that's what's happening. Many people feel like they found the new way or they found the way and they feel puffed puffed up and many of these false religions are filled with perversion are filled with drug use are filled with lust are filled with corruption and there's zero evidence of transformation in their lives you know most of them are filled with aggression and hatred like i said if you are telling me that you're allowed to do this in your religion and i know that according to the word of god that's bad or that's evil then that's you're, you're in a false religion. If you tell me that, hey, come and believe this new doctrine with me, you know, follow this new practice with me. You know, we're allowed to get tattoos. We're allowed to get piercing. We're allowed to have multiple wives. Listen, does that sound right to you? Some stuff is just common sense. Does that sound right to you? Does that sound like anything that God would approve of? Does that sound like anything that Jesus preached? No. It's not okay. The word of God says that our bodies, your body, my body is the temple of the Holy Spirit, the Holy Ghost. And so our bodies are not our own. And so if this religion is telling me that it's okay to mark up my body, then that's a false religion. And in these last days, I'm, I'm, guys, we need a greater level. We need a greater level of discernment from God to know what's of God and what's not of God. Just because a person comes out and say, you know, you know, this is this is what we're doing and this is how we're serving God. John says to John says to try the spirit in John 4. Try every spirit. Beloved, believe not every spirit, but try the spirits, whether they are of God, because many false prophets are going out into the world. Everybody that has a title in front of their names are not sent by God. If you if you cannot discern that, then you are going to get what you are longing for. You're going to get what you want. You like having itchy ears. You like what T.D. Jakes and Joel Osteen and Tyler Perry and all the other, you know, worldly religions, worldly religious motivational speakers. You like what they are telling you. And guess what? You say, well, why do, why do God has false prophets? Why do he allow false prophets for the people that like the fake stuff? For the people that have itchy ears. No, they, they like what they're preaching. They don't see nothing wrong with what T.D. Jakes is preaching. They don't have the discernment to know that that's a, that's a wolf in sheep clothing. No, that's for you. That's for somebody. God has positioned the false prophets for those that like fake things. For those that you don't have a desire for real transformation. You don't have a desire to be godly. You don't have a desire to be the light. You don't have a desire to be one way. You like worldliness. You like worldly things. And so... God has positioned these individuals for people like you. No, they're for you. You know, that's and that's judgment on the churches. When there are churches that God has positioned and set up leadership or pastors that are false, that's judgment on a church. That's judgment on a church. And God has sealed people in their own ways. In the last days, he says that he's going to give people over to their own desires, reprobate. Now I'm going to give you over to that and I'm going to let you believe that. I'm going to let you believe your own, your own desires, your own lust, your own knowledge. I'm going to let you believe that because you believe it anyways. You believe it anyways and you don't, you don't read my word for yourself. You don't see anything wrong with the fact that he's preaching that, you know, it's okay to be intimate outside of marriage as long as you be, as long as you use protection. It's okay to, you know, it's okay to, to abort your kids. It's okay to listen to Christian hip hop. It's okay to listen to worldly music. It's okay to, you know, get rich or die trying. It's okay. It's okay to tell a white lie. It's okay to find another way. Jesus Christ is not the only way. It's okay. It's okay. Yes, God has set them up for you. That's for you. 
That's not for liberty because I need the truth. I want the truth. You know, I, I thought I thought to myself earlier, if if I were to follow another religion, would I not want the truth? Would you not want the truth? Let's say if I were not if I were not in Christianity, like the times where I was practicing with the Jehovah Witness, I wanted truth. I wanted truth. I just didn't know how to seek out truth because what I thought I had, I felt like there was more. I feel like no, this this cannot be all that there is to it because practicing with the Jehovah Witness, there's not much of a requirement. There was not much that was required of me, meaning there was no repentance preached to me like, hey, you got to turn away from fornication. Hey, you got to turn away from smoking marijuana and taking in substance. Hey, you got to turn away from self-abuse. Hey, you got to turn away from lying on your taxes. Hey, you got to turn away from cursing out old people and, and stealing. There was nothing required of me, but a part of me felt like, no, this cannot be right because we're doing the same thing as the world is doing. There's no real separation. And I think, I think this is what makes Jesus so distinctive. And this is why the world is trying to eliminate Jesus and trying to attack Jesus and what he came to do because He's real and Jesus comes to bring a separation from him and the rest of the world and the other religions. That's, that's really what this is all about. Everything that is out there is really to attack the name of Jesus, which is why they've removed him from so many things out there. You know, you can't say Jesus in school anymore. You can't pray. You can't talk about religion you know, re religion in, 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 at work, but it's it's so hypocritical because they have other practice other practices that they do. But you know, you can't say the name of Jesus, and I think that this is how I know that what I believe is the truth and real is because every other thing is against it. You don't see people coming against uh Muhammad or Buddha. You don't see people coming against the Hindu gods. You don't see uh, people coming against the the. The, the false gods of, of Egypt and of Africa, you don't see that. But what do you see? You see every other religion and every other thing out there coming against Jesus. That should tell you something. That, that should tell you something. That should make you highlight something. You even see the worldly people making movies about Jesus. Why? They don't even care about Jesus. Their, their ancestors and them alone are the ones that crucified him. They crucified Jesus. Like, those are going to be the ones that when he comes back, when he cracks that sky, they're going to be the ones that look upon him whom, whom they pierce. Those are going to be the ones, but yet they're making movies about Jesus. And they're making, the, 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 the Christian celebrities are making music about Jesus. And they want you to be convinced that, you know, they're, they're converted. You know, they don't care about Jesus, but they want your money. Why are they not making movies about Buddha? Why are they not making movies about Allah and Muhammad? Why are they not making movies about the Hindu gods? Why? That's an indicator. That should let you know that this is the real thing. Because every other thing is against Jesus. You don't see them coming against, um, you know, Buddha or, you know, the, 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 the God of peace and the Greek God. You don't see them doing that. But they're coming against Jesus. And so that's an indicator that this has to be the real thing. And it is. No other religion has has evidence of transformation. Okay, people come to me all the time and say, well, you know, I believe this. Yeah, but you're still doing what the world is doing. You think that that's okay. You think that it's okay to have multiple wives. Multiple wives. You think that it's okay to smoke marijuana in your state, your mind be altered, and you still can talk to God. You think that it's okay to curse people out. You think that it's okay to get tattoos and still be a Christian. You think that that's okay. And so there's no transformation in your life. You're, you're trying to convince me that what you say is real is real, but there's no evidence. I can look at my life and, 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 and see the transformation of who I used to be to who I am now. And those of you who, who know me from the past, you can see the transformation. And you need to see the transformation. You need to see that what a person is telling you is real, that there's results. Just like if I was to present to you and tell you, hey, this right here, this is good. This, I'm sorry that it's pretty good. It is pretty good. But <laughs> like, hey, if I was to tell you that, hey, this produces 100% results of weight loss or whatever whatever it does, biotin, whatever, whatever it does. If I tell you that, hey, this does this, you're going to want to see some results. 
You're going to want to see evidence of what I'm telling you works, works. You're not going to just go along and say, okay, well, let me buy it. How much is it? No, I want to know that what I invest my time in, my heart in is real and that, that it's, that it, that it works, that it works. And so I'm not here, I'm not here to sell Jesus to anyone, but I'm here to let you know that he is the only way. It doesn't matter what they tell you out there and work religion, you know, allows this and allows that. Listen, they are thieves and robbers. It is a false doctrine. It is the doctrine of devils. People get these new doctrines by interacting with devils, encountering devils. Understand this and then I'll let you go. We hear from three sources. I don't know if you've ever seen those cartoons with the devil on one shoulder and the angel on another shoulder. And then you have you as that middle person having to make a decision. You have the devil telling you, just do it. Slap them. Or, you know, if you've ever seen Tom and Jerry, you know, just, just kill the cat. Eat the cat. But then you have the angel telling you, or, or the rat. You have the angel telling you, just let the rat go. Don't do it. Don't do it. And then you have you. You have to make a decision. Listen, that's the sources. You hear from God. You hear from the devil and you hear from you. And so if you are not trying the spirits, then you are not discerning what spirit you are of. If you're doing anything outside of Jesus Christ, if you're doing and if you're practicing anything outside of this and you've not tested the spirits, then that's the indicator that you are not hearing from God because God is a God of order. He is a God of order. And so if you are in a false religion, and you say you're lost, you don't know the way, listen, I'm letting you know the way. Jesus Christ is the only way. Listen, he promised you, no other religion can promise you anything from believing what you believe. Jesus Christ is the only one, as I read er earlier, he says that there are many mansions in my father's house. He said, if it were not so, I would have told you. If it was not true, I would have told you the truth. No other religion has anything to offer you. What can it offer you? What, the fact that you be reincarnated? The fact that you will take on a new body in, an, in another life? How do you know that's real? What evidence do you have? How do you know that what you believe is real apart from the truth? How do you know? How do you know that, that God hears you when you smoke marijuana and your, 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 your state of mind is altered? How do you know that that's true? How do you know? Because according to, to the word of God, it says God hears not sinners. But if any man be a worshiper of God, him God hears. And so you got to consider your life. Your life is on the line. The days are darker. The days are darker. Many people are going to fall away from the faith because they're going to see another way and they're going to take that path. They're going to take that path. And guess what? All of those other paths leads to destruction. Jesus said broad is the way that leads to destruction. And I think it's very key that he says that the, the, the path to eternal life, eternal life, it is narrow and it be, it be few that find it. It be few that go. It be few that takes and stays on this walk. Why? Because many are going to fall away. Many are going to try to go through another door. And so that's my encouragement to you. Like I said, this is not up for debate. You know, there is no evidence that what you believe is, is, is the real way, is the truth. You know, if, if what you believe incorporates the practicing of evil things, then that's a false doctrine. And that is not of God, not the God of heaven. I don't know about the, the little G gods here on earth, but that is not of God of heaven because he's a God that is holy and he's a God of order and structure. And so be encouraged in Jesus name.